sit down or everybody gets standing? Sit, stand. I don't know what the chairs are for. Though. You know what, everybody, a few in the okay, back You can sit, you can sit. Back. Back. Cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's back row. Yeah. Oh, well, awesome. it's, it's, it's for all of you. So a few people in the front row and a few in the back row. So there's enough seats for you. Standing. You can sit with them. Sure. He likes the line. Susan Alaiko, my name is Mishadia. I'm one of the board members at the Islamic House of Wisdom. And on behalf of the Islamic House of Wisdom, I want to welcome you all and thanks for coming. This is a community candle visual come to end gun violence with the rise of different a lot of numerous gun violence happen happening worldwide and specifically in USA. Uh, this is a time to call out um, uh, against the gun violence and regulation and we're going to start with a few words from Imam Ibrahim. Good evening and thank you everyone. We are here to uh, honor and remember and reflect and pray for the victims of recent gun crimes and gun violence from Philadelphia to Texas to Oklahoma and actually it started from Michigan, the, the tragedy of school. So it's been a long time, last four five years, observing uh, shooting after shooting and violence after violence, funeral after funeral. And we had this conversation to contribute to the dialogue, the national dialogue in our nation that uh, there must be a point that enough is enough and we as faith foundations, as families, as security system that we are so honored to have a wonderful uh, leadership, uh, Chief Hart with us this evening in his great vision so we all are working together to bring this awareness, to contribute to this uh, idea in our nation that this tragedy is heartbreaking, this is a crisis, and when we see like the experience of uh, January 6th, violence in U.S. capital, and all of this, it doesn't work with our democracy. We cannot have combination of violence and democracy. We must be a nation of dialogue and conversation, and the violence is not a solution, mass shooting is not a solution. We cannot claim that we are one nation under God, but then we are so many nations under guns. There was a day that in our schools the, the challenge was about gun, right? 40 years ago, 50 years ago, if a student was shooting a gun, that was the issue now, the gun turned to gun. And it is a time that we as Faith communities uh, work with the families, with the police department, with the educational system, with the uh, justice system, that how we can correct this culture that's becoming like a pandemic in so many people's mind and hearts and soul, that they realize that we cannot be a civilized society with this kind of mentality. We cannot be a society of civilization 
is the mentality of Taliban and, uh, and Al-Qaeda and violence. You cannot have your cake and eat it too at the same time. So we have uh, people in our community, yesterday I was listening to our police chief, that he was talking about the love in the community. And I was so impressed that, you know, usually a chief talks about the law and regulations. But I realized that laws and regulations, they are very basic things. You should think even above that. And love is the message of Islam, message of Christianity, message of Judaism. It's so heartbreaking that some people, they try to justify this violence and crime in the society, even in the Constitution. They think that they can use Constitution that is there to protect the public and uh, serving their violence and massacring people uh, in the name of Constitution. And worse than that, to use Christianity and say, oh, we want to make America Christian again. Well, you are very welcome to do that. I like that, to see if, you know, the values of Jesus are governing our society. Yeah, if you are talking about Christianity of Jesus, I agree with you. But unfortunately, those who say that, let's make this country Christian again, they are talking about hate. They are talking about violence. And this is double standard. You know how many people are saying that they are pro-life and they are anti-abortion? Of course we have our own religious uh, statement about uh, the, the nature of abortion. But this is hypocritical to say we are pro-life, but then the same people, they are not there to condemn violence and gun crimes and this kind of thing. You cannot, again, have your cake and eat it too. And you cannot justify all of these things and say, I want to be free, absolute freedom, but then everybody else should follow the rule. I shouldn't follow the law, I shouldn't follow the regulation. That's for somebody else. If I'm like white and it's just for me, and if you are different, uh, you know, skin color, that really is not for you. You have to just obey. And if you disagree with me, I'm going to use my gun till you agree with me that this is the correct thing. So I think that this conversation, this prayer, this kind of gathering uh, are there to contribute that, no, the solution is not violence, the solution is education, the solution is peace, the solution is one community and one family, the solution is dialogue, the solution is to get together and talk with one another. That is the solution. And uh, if there are problems that cause this gun violence, whether it is a failure of the families, or whether it is drugs or alcohol or, or mental issues, we have to address all of these issues. Unfortunately, the administration, White House, uh, government, uh, governor of Michigan, they are all working on this direction, but we need to work together and uh, do our best to fix the situation, to reduce these violences, and even if we cannot succeed 100%, but well, at least in the eyes of God, we can say, oh God, we, we did our best, and we said what we're supposed to say, and we did our best to uh, oppose violence and gun crimes and uh, helping the, the victims and helping the families. So uh, I know that Chief, you uh, addressed our community leaders yesterday and uh, I was so impressed with your vision as a, a security leader in our community and we are very proud of your, your vision and we like your contribution also to this conversation. Very much. <clears throat> Thank you for having me here. I am uh, your chief of police here at the Dearborn Heights Police Department. I started on February 28th. And I can tell you that our number one crime in our community is not uh, stealing cars or um, you know, driving with a suspended license or shoplifting. It is issues surrounding exactly what Imam was saying. It's 
it's the conflict that we are having with each other. Uh, there's a lot of people right now that are trying to divide us uh, for one reason or another. And we need to learn to come together and love each other again. And that was my message to our community members last night. And we're going to start a movement here in Dearborn Heights. We need to find a way to uh, respectfully disagree, to spend time in engaging each other and finding out uh, different perspectives in life and, and getting to a, an area of common ground. Almost every day our partners in the media are reporting about a road rage incident or a domestic violence incident. Our number one crime here is aggravated and non-aggravated assaults and stalking in this community. And those come down to the very core of how we are dealing with each other and dealing with conflict and disagreements. We've had some very serious accidents in our community that are a result of road rage. How did we get here? But more importantly, how do we get out of this? And I think that we at the police department are going to lead with love. We're going to find a way to set the example. We're going to treat our community with dignity and respect. And we're going to help our community. Uh, and hopefully we'll start a movement here in Southeast Michigan that can take off and lead with love and try to get people to start having conversations with each other instead of resorting to violence. We can and we will get out of this. But we have to do it together and we have to do it with love. Thank you. Thank you. You can say this. Uh, uh, Pastor Puli, you want to say a few words? Dearborn, in Dearborn Heights, in Flint, Michigan, Detroit. The list 
is overwhelming and the names are known to you. We commend them to your eternal love. Grant healing and wholeness to the survivors who are wounded or traumatized. Restore all whose spirits are maimed by such violence, that we may serve as your arms of care to those in distress. We pray in this moment and for each moment to come. Make us instruments of your peace. Amen. Thank you so much, and uh, we have a lot of more, everyone in this room is an advocate against gun violence, and we have a uh, former representative and current uh, candidate for Congress, Sherry gay Dagnabo. she's a great advocate against gun violence, she would like to share some thoughts with us. Thank you, Omar. Thank you, Michelle. Today is certainly a solemn assembly that we continue to have to light a candle this week an 11 year old have to release balloons. It's, it's overwhelming. As a parent of one son, my heart laments for every mass shooting that we've continued to experience. I lost my five-year-old cousin, Caleb, earlier this year at the hands of a 16-year-old. A 16-year-old. If we think back to when we were 16, our minds can't even conceive the thought of taking a life of a caterpillar, of a butterfly, of a lightning bug, let alone a life. So we stand today united, Christian, Muslim. All that matters is that we are children of our Creator and that we are coming as the prayer that came before us in unity, seeking guidance, from our Creator, from God, to give us the words to say, to restore hope into the lives and minds of those who are sick enough to take lives, multiple lives at one time, to give hope to people who feel hopeless and feel they have no other opportunity, but to make a demand, a demand on our Michigan legislature on our federal, congressional, and Senate leadership to say that advancing legislation to say that you have to raise the age to 21 to not buy an assault weapon is not enough. It's almost mockery to the lives that have been taken senselessly. We need a ban on assault weapons, period. There's no reason for AR-15 to exist. And so we must continue to fight. We must continue to unite. We must continue to make a demand. But not only that, ensure that we flip the house on August the 2nd in Lansing and that we send leaders to Congress that are willing to stand on the side of true right to life. The last thing I'll say is it's a shame that those that pretend to cling and hang their hat as being the faith caucus, the faith leaders, to say that they truly respect a right to life only when it comes to making a decision on women's bodies, but not a right to life when it comes to protecting our children and our school staff in schools. 
If they're going to call for right to life, in one instance, they must call for right to life and banning assault weapons, doing background checks, and have sensible gun legislation that will not allow the ongoing sale of weapons without a license. It's shameful that people can go at 12 and 13 years old and buy a weapon at a private gun fair. They can't buy alcohol. They can't buy a lottery ticket. They shouldn't be able to buy a weapon. And so all of us united here tonight, we're going to make that demand, but we're going to do something, Imam. We're going to put our faith in action because the scripture tells us that faith without works is dead. And so thank you for this opportunity to stand united with you all tonight and call for justice in action as we all take our souls to the polls on Tuesday, August 2nd. God bless you, and I love you. Thank you, Sherry, and honestly, those visuals and those speaking events are amazing, but the real change happened with our politicians, with voting the people who we sent to Lansing or to the Congress in D.C. to change and make those changes and legislation with the chief being here. This is the actual change that happened, and now we're going to also have more community leaders and residents Speaking. We're going to have Sam Hashem, one of the Dearborn Commission on the Charter. Uh, he's going to say a few words, and we're going to have more people lined up to speak as well. Thank you, Imam Hilai, for your leadership and advocacy. When it comes to gun violence and mass shooting, we cannot deal with the issue as it's going to disappear by itself. This is what our politicians and our Congress are dealing with this issue as there is a magic wand and you're gonna wake up the second day and it's gonna disappear. Well, guess what? It will never disappear if we don't act upon it. And the way that we need to act upon it, we need to have a multi-layer approach. Why, why is the legal age to buy alcohol or tobacco or to buy a lottery ticket or to go and gamble is 21 and for semi-automatic, it's 18. Does it make sense? No. It doesn't make sense. Our gun laws don't make sense. There is no common sense when it comes to gun laws. The other layer that we need to pay attention to is when it comes to education. It starts at home, and parents need to take responsibility, and families need to come together and you know, talk to their kids. When you let your kids fall between the cracks of the community, that will yield more issues. It starts at home. It starts in schools. It starts in places of worship. It starts with a community that comes together, that talks about the issues and doesn't shy away from the issues. It starts with a partnership between families and schools and government agencies. Yes. We need to focus on mental illness. Yes. It is on the rise. We cannot deny that in our community, in Dearborn, in Dearborn Heights, across the US, our kids and special youths are suffering from mental illness. Are suffering. And COVID just added salt to the wound. It is on the rise. Look at the statistics. We cannot deny statistics. I'm, I'm really upset when it comes to our government, government in Congress because it seems like we can act very quickly to help everyone except ourselves. When we need to give arms to Ukraine, when we need to give arms to other country, we, the Congress can meet like within days. However, when we need to take actions on urgent matters in the U.S., it takes them forever and it will never happen. Like years. I call on our representatives in Congress, both chambers, 
Representative Ann Sanigan, on President Biden and the administration to take action now. We cannot wait because every moment we wait, someone is dying. Thank you. I want to thank you all for being here today and uh, thank you to the organizers. Uh, thank you, Matt, for welcoming us into this space. Um, this mosque was my home growing up. This is where I spent my time as a kid and where I choose to spend my time as an adult. Unfortunately, kids nowadays don't feel like they have that safe space. They don't feel like there's a venue that exists where they can feel comfortable, where they can express themselves. School used to be that, but over time, we've allowed it to, to take away the, the intimacy between teachers and students, between parents and teachers. The trust that existed no longer does. And when you lose that trust, when you start filling classrooms with 30, 40 students, you lose that intimacy, you lose that care. And why would a student feel like they're cared about when they're one of 40 in a loud classroom. Unfortunately, most of the things we seek to do are reactionary. And I wish our reactionary actions actually worked. We find that even after Sandy Hook, after Oxford, and after this most recent shooting, we still have yet to take action, and I'm afraid we won't. And that's the danger. Michigan has the potential to change, and yet, even if you look to some of our neighboring states, all the way down in Florida, they've passed red flag legislation. Why can't we do something as simple as that to improve background checks, to improve mental health checks, just to ensure that those are, are, are just basic measures we're taking? I care so much about this community, and I just want to make sure that we can feel safe, and right now, we don't, and we won't, until we take some sensible action, until we take decisive action. But until then, we're going to be in this perpetual state of fear. Inshallah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, good evening. Thank you, Ramilahi, for organizing this video for tonight. And God said, be right, and that is right. See? But how are we going to organize those videos? I'm from the country of Baghdad, so I came here 25 years ago, out of country, more genocide in war, in, in war than any others, uh, even till now, since World War II. When I came in America 25 years ago, I came in freedom. That's what I thought. But there is no real freedom. Brothers and sisters, first of all, we must bring God Almighty in our, in our houses and keep them in our places of worship. Bring them in our schools and keep them in every classroom and even in locker rooms. Most uh, massacres happening in schools and other violences abroad of the United States. Why is this? No parents teach their children to go to kill other kid. But the parents not take their parental responsibility to their child to raise them in vain for peace and unity, as we all pray for peace and unity. And Islam, as a religion, Islam in other language means peace. But we need to enjoy that peace, not just say Islam is peace, as war that is, but we are obligated all the way from creed, 
from saying Shahada, all the way to five principles to live daily life. And your child will not go to do violence as long as regrets in this. As you see in Muslim, thank God from in Muslim society we don't have those violence that they are shooters in the schools and so on. If it happens that Muslim get involved, he is an international terrorist or his family or even whole country is terrorizing or part of organization as called. If his black person happens to be shooter, he is a domestic uh, domestic terrorist. If his white person happened to be shooter, he's a mental illness problem. And we need to work hard, pray for our president, our diplomats, our legislator, legislators, for our law enforcement to enforce laws, to make punishment on those who really deserve to be punished. And thank you, Imam Radi, for this opportunity to, to gather us together tonight that we may say a word and that we make action, that we make some solution of this gathering and at least so one solution will be better for tomorrow. Thank you again. God bless you all. Thank you. Bless you. So, uh, as we are waiting for the Senator, uh, uh, if there is any question from the ship, uh, uh, Will you be here if, if anybody has a question here or later on? But as we've been talking, uh, you know, the story in Florida last uh, Memorial Day that uh, it says uh, a lady was doing barbecue in front of her house and then there was another lady who arrived and they started a conversation and then conversation turned to complain and yelling at one another and it got to physical. Then one of the ladies, she gave her purse to her daughter and she opened it and there was a pistol in the purse and this girl was only 10 years old. And she used that and killed the other lady. These kind of things are unbelievable. And uh, something even more unbelievable that happened again to Florida a few days before Memorial Day was that a boy who was only two years old, his mom gave him a gun. And he used that gun against his dad. Mm. And dad died because of that shooting of his son of only two years old. Two. This is the tsunami. It is. We need everybody's help on this issue. The faith leader, the educators, the families, the government, the police department, the community, everybody is responsible. So irresponsibility, whether at the level of the families, negligence at the level of parenting, this is a warning. As we are approaching summer now, and it's going to be two months of free time from school, as a big responsibility of the parents to deal with these kids and use this time for education, whether it's a movie, whether it's a museum, whether it's a journey, whether it's learning and reading a book, whether it's a community visitation, whatever it takes to use this summer season for construction of the community and raising our kids with more awareness and especially against these serious dangers, gun, violence, drugs, alcohol, addiction to all these viruses, that we thought that this pandemic, this virus is the most destructive but we are overcoming that virus. 
the virus which is more weaker and more wide and you are more vulnerable to it is this social culture and moral and mental and spiritual pandemic that we have to win that but as the chief said we have to do it together you have a point uh, yeah sure Thank you. Yes. Um, we also have another community activist from acrl she's going to be sharing a few words with us until the senator join us as well but i also have prepared a few words to share um as a parent who live in, in this country and who have kids who were born and raised in this country as we know in wayne county there's a lot of immigrants and many of us experienced and grew up in war zone however in those war zone we all we know which one is the war zone and we know where it's gonna end but here now with the rise of incident of gun violence um, and reckless driving and mental health uh, issues post the pandemic safety is becoming a concern added to the list aside from being in war zone Gun violence is becoming a contemporary global human rights issue. And here in USA, among wealthier and developed countries, the USA is, is becoming an outlier when it comes to the fire, uh, firearm violence. And our government have allowed gun violence to become a human rights crisis. Why? Because of the wide access of firearms and loose regulations. Yes, great uh, visuals like that is amazing to voice the concern, but again, with having the authority and regulation and sending the right people to the Congress or to Lansing to put change and, and change the legislation, this is the action. We don't wanna always be reactive. We wanna take action and make sure legislation passes. Another thing is, um, our government, like I said, have a legal obligation to protect the right to life. And accordingly, the responsibility to protect people from firearms violence is a right. This is why we're gathering here, to have the citizens, we are gathered to have the power to tell our government that by using gun laws, we can all live safely, safely without fear, which is our human rights. Um, Maria Sharana, you have a few words to share and uh, on behalf of ACRL, which is stand for American Civil uh, Liberty, Liberty and Rights. Um, so if Senator is not going to be, she is going to be our last speaker. Except anybody else has a point to say, please let us know. Other than that, maybe you are the last one. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. My name is Maria Sharana, executive director of the Arab American Civil Rights League, um, also a community member. Um, gun violence is a very important topic to discuss today, especially in this era. It's getting a bit more dangerous all around the world. It's unfortunate when we have to hear about the tragic events going on around the nation. It feels like it's ongoing. I'm scrolling through social media. And I see so much catastrophe. And one thing I've noticed is a trend with some sort of gun violence massacre. We're calling for an end to gun violence and terrorism. It's important to be the voice for the voiceless all across the nation. Yes, there are protocols put in place for safety, but we need to really do something now to ensure the safety of our community at large. As a unified whole, we need to raise awareness about our concerns that there needs to be more safety measures put in place. These are our kids, our children, our students, our community members that we have to keep safe. And we have to ensure we do so. This is the time that unfortunately there's a rise in crime and we need to speak up as a community for our community and other communities too. We can raise a lot of awareness as a whole, as a unified front, to protect each other. We need more contact to our legislators to enforce more laws to protect against senseless crimes. When I think of gun violence, I think of schools, our children, our students, our staff, our family. With that being said, I would like to take a moment and say that our hearts go out to the students, the staff, and family 
and families in Texas who were impacted by the shooting, condolences are truly not enough to express our deepest sympathy. Safety is the utmost importance, and we must continue to be vigilant in all of our safety protocols. We can't wait for an event or a massacre to happen to make changes. We need to regroup now, and we need to discuss how we can, as a team, ensure that there's enough safety across our community, across the world, and across the board. We need to come together as a community, as a whole, to ensure best practices against gun violence so we can make sure our babies, our babies, our future, our generation are safe. I'm not a mom, but we're one team. At the end of the day, they are. They are ours. We have a duty to protect. We need the staff, the students, the community to rest at ease. We're adapting back to reality. Again, that can be difficult in itself to many people. As for, I'd like to take this back to Nadir Saleh, Allah Yuhama. That was an unfortunate event that happened that could have been prevented. I hope additional safety measures will be put in place now. If anything, Nadir is uh, truly an angel uh, because she is potentially saving the lives of many. Uh, she definitely has a beautiful spot in heaven. To the children, kids, community, safety comes first. You serve many roles in your life and wear many hats. You have a world ahead of you. As a community, our hearts go out to the victims and their family in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, the Tulsa shooting is one of the 233 mass shootings in the United States this year. Our hearts also go out uh, to community, the community that was impacted uh, by the Buffalo mass shooting that happened in a supermarket and which was a highly motivated hate crime that left 10 people dead. So this is a time where we call for action um, to protect our community, our people, our world, our legislators are put in position for a reason. We need you, we need your voice, we need the voice of the community, our parents, our children, they matter, our community members, we matter. Thank you. Thank you. Last but not the least, right? Yeah, thank you so much, Mariam. And uh, we have the uh, speaking of our governor. <laughs> And the legislation, we have Senator Santana, who is a great advocate for gun violence, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It is an honor to be with you this evening. Um, in moments like this, you know, it is definitely necessary for our communities to come together. And as a lawmaker who has been a part of this effort to advocate for gun safety in our state. We have been having this conversation for at least the five and a half years that I've been a part of the legislature, along with my co uh, former colleague here, uh, Sherry Gay and Yogo. We have been having this conversation since Parkland in our state. Um, you know, one of the things that is very unnerving, just here in Michigan, as a state capital, there are over 29 state capitals across this country who still allow for guns to enter into the capital. Just think about that. When you think about June, uh, January 6th, where people stormed our country's capital and, and, and people's lives were lost, this is enough. Let me just give you some facts just about the state of Michigan when it comes to the gun violence that we've seen in our state. Wyoming, Michigan, four killed in 22. Benton Harbor, one killed, six injured. Detroit, Michigan, three injured by gun violence. Grand Rapids, 2022, three injured. Stanwood, Michigan, four killed, one injured. Hamtramck, three injured. Detroit, Michigan, three injured. Detroit, Michigan, four injured. Clarkston, Michigan, three killed. Flint, Michigan, three injured. Pawpaw, Michigan, four injured. Grand Rapids, three injured. Benton Harbor, one killed, two injured. Lansing, Michigan, four injured. Troy, Michigan, two killed, one injured. Detroit, Michigan, again, three killed. Detroit, Michigan, one killed. Detroit, Michigan, one killed. Two killed. Troy, Michigan, 
Flint, Michigan, two killed. Benton Harbor, uh, excuse me, Burton, Michigan, one killed, two injured. Lansing, Michigan, one killed, three injured. Detroit, Michigan, two killed, one injured. Oxford, Michigan, four killed, seven injured. The gun violence is real. And unfortunately, our country has a love affair with guns. There are six guns per one person in this country. Just think about that. There are six guns per one individual in our country. And when you think about what's happening in our schools, our children, our children, school is supposed to be a place where they get educated so that they can become everything that they imagine to be. And now we have children across this country and parents and teachers who are now experiencing trauma because of the love affair that this country has with donors. We have introduced legislation in the state of Michigan to help support making sure that guns are put up in safe places where there are mental health evaluations prior to individuals being able to purchase a gun. But yet, we are still sitting on our hands in this state. I am hopeful. It is my hope and my prayer that each and every parent, child, teacher, administrator, parent, get up and talk to your legislators about making sure that we do what's right here in Michigan. Because no one else in this state or in this country should lose their lives to a piece of metal. If we value life in this country as we say we do, and that we're pro-life as my colleagues decide to say all the time, then we need to be from life from the birth to the earth. And that is what we need to do in our state. Thank you all so much for allowing me to speak. God bless you. And let's continue to work hard to make sure that we don't continue to have this love affair in a country with metal and guns. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Senator. I know that uh, media should enforce and seven of the social media. You can talk with the guests individually, with our representative, faith leader, political leaders. But we'll end with uh, Surat al fatiha I know that Imam Arif mentioned something that when um, tragedies of uh, mass shooting happen, uh, usually we don't hear the word of terrorism. And all we hear is just gunmen. Uh, terrorism term is not used in a situation like that. And, uh, but if there is something different, different religion, especially strong faith, because of Islamophobia, the first thing is that it is a terrorist tragedy, yeah. and then they talk about the religion of the person. Usually in any other cases, we never hear that the gunman was Christian, or he was Jewish, or he was Hindu, or any other faith tradition. The only time that we hear about religion is if that criminal was a Muslim. And this is not a fair. So let's call them what they are. They are domestic terrorism. Yes, they are. And that's what they are. And they are racist, they are terrorists. And uh, we take this opportunity to uh, say the opening chapter of our holy book to bless the soul of those victims from Philadelphia to Texas to Oklahoma to Michigan to every other area and all over the world where there are victims of terrorism, victims of war, victims of violence, uh, we say prayer to satisfy their own souls. Oh.